Welcome to the Empowered Warrior Podcast. My name is Angela Noel, and I am an intuitive coach, acupuncturist, and Chinese herbalist. This podcast is all about empowerment, meaning how you can maintain your personal power in order to have the best life beyond your imagination. An empowered warrior is someone who has the identity of a person who is healthy, radiant, and free from all suffering, and has the tools ready and available to move through life's obstacles with confidence, ease, and a sense of freedom. In this podcast, I bring over 16 years experience in Chinese medicine, countless years of self-development, and a passion for helping others find their personal power. I will be discussing just a few of my favorite topics regarding health from a Chinese medicine perspective, brain habits, and spirituality, so that you can quickly pave your pathway to freedom and be free from the chains that have kept you stuck. My intention with this podcast is to serve as a guide for warriors who want to form a healthy foundation of body, mind, and spirit, and sustain it by changing who they are being from the inside and having a stronger connection to their higher selves. My goal is to help students end the unnecessary suffering that they place on themselves by having poor health habits, negative thought loops, and a lack of self-worth. I'm so happy that you're here. Hello, Empowered Warriors. Welcome to a really exciting episode. I have another special guest, Nancy Wind. Nancy, hi, how are you? I am doing great, Angela. How are you? I'm doing excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much for for being on here and taking the time to talk to the warriors today who are listening. And I'm just curious, first of all, if you could just introduce yourself and let the audience know who you are and how you help people. Sure. And thank you, um, Angela, for inviting me on the podcast and for all the listeners that are that are tuning in. Um, I am a health and lifestyle coach, and I am leading mostly women on a journey for them to really uh, align with the rhythms of the day and to allow themselves to turn a little bit more inward and find their own body wisdom so that they can begin to lead a life of um, choice and intention. I am also the founder of Peaks and Poses Trail Yoga and Outdoor Adventure. I started that business in 2015 and that really happened organically uh, in in just my own passions for yoga and the practice and uh, sort of the lifestyle that yoga has brought to me through my studies and my own practice as well as just a huge interest in hiking and being out in the mountains and wanting to share that with everybody. That's kind of the way that I roll when I find something that really excites me. I feel like everybody should know about it and everybody should experience the things that I'm experiencing. And obviously it's not for everybody, but I I feel sort of compelled to to at least put it out there in the world. That's, I'm really, really, um, and I know we've chatted off offline about this, but I would love if you could elaborate a little more specifically about a client wants, if somebody wants to work with you, because I I heard the, now correct me if I'm wrong, lifestyle coaching, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Or nutrition? Health and lifestyle coaching. Health and lifestyle coaching. If somebody were to come and want to work with you, what would you, how would you help them? How would you, would you meet with them online? Do you take them out into nature and hiking? Do you do a little bit of both? I guess I do a little bit of both. I have different ways of meeting people. One of them is through my trail yoga business. Another way is through my plant-based cooking events that I have been fortunate that a lot of the local libraries have been hosting me as one of their events. 
So I've been doing a lot of nighttime cooking. And also um, people are referred to me maybe for my Power Up, which is the name of my weekly coaching program. I am also have just started a Living in Rhythm monthly program. So I, I feel like I have to have conversations with people. Sometimes I offered, let's just go and take a hike and take a walk. Because I know for me, my brain functions differently when I'm moving and when I'm outside than when I'm just sitting or sitting on the phone or having a conversation with somebody on Zoom. And just try to get to know people. I, I tend to have repeat customers coming on my, particularly my trail yoga events and even my cooking my cooking events. So people get to know me and trust me. And, um, and that's really just the beginning of developing a relationship. I have done some couples coaching around plant-based lifestyle, but my power up program is about um, it's guided by the principles of Ayurveda. And so that would take more of like a, like a strategy session with somebody or a discovery call to really find out like where this person might be in their life? What are their sort of pain points? What, what do they want for themselves? And I try to help them make a decision if this is the right program for them. Somebody really has to be sort of really invested in their own health and wellness. And, and really it's an investment in themselves mm -hmm. and their future self. So. I love that. Yeah. You, you, you mentioned that uh, there's a couple things you said, but just uh, the fact that you mentioned the investment that in themselves, because a lot of people, I feel like, you know, the world's changing, right? Our values are changing. People are, are waking up or are really learning to turn inward and figure out what it is that they want from their lives and who they want to spend their time with. And they often look to coaches, but one of the objections that I know I hear and it's common in the industry is, you know, wow, it's, that's an investment. That's, it, it's costly, but like you said, it's an investment in themselves. It's an investment in their future and, and their health and their well being. So I, I love how you address that piece and also the nature piece. Like I, I, I love how, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but Basically, if somebody's interested in working with you, or maybe they're already established, you take them on a hike. And mm -hmm. that is so unique and such a great opportunity because so many people are, we're cooped up in these, in, in our spaces, right? And especially in the last 15 months, what a great way to get to know somebody because Mother Earth can be so grounding and offers so many gifts. And I love that you offer that. So I'm just curious to know that when you take people out on hikes, is there a certain strategy? I don't want to say strategy because that sounds so life left brain, but what specifically will you discuss with these clients or what will you, will, will you do exercises with them or... Yeah, I'm just curious to know a little bit more about that. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because my trail yoga business started in 2015 and I got certified as a health and lifestyle coach through Yoga Healer Community in 2019. So it's fairly new for me. This is my third year running like a group program. So now that I'm, you know, thinking about all of this, you know, people have really come to my, to me, like I said, a lot of different ways. So yeah, I would, I, I generally do group hikes. Like I have a local, a series of local hikes coming up in the next um, two months. And I'd like to offer more of those because I think it's just, we have so much open land here in Massachusetts and a lot of people don't really know about it. I've done a lot of hiking in the Blue Hills reser uh, Reservation a lot of people have grown up in this area. I've never even been there. And so for me, hiking just kind of opens somebody up. I don't really have an agenda. And that's just the kind of person that I am. I think I'm very approachable and I'm very trusting. And I have a lot of confidence in my own hiking skills. And I think once people, you know, spend uh, some time with me outside, out, outside they they get my essence 
And I think a lot of people connect to that. And, and so then it just begins a relationship. And then people start to know about some other things that, that I offer. And a lot of my offerings have really expanded in the last, last year, particularly during COVID. A lot of my cooking, like I was starting to go that route, cooking at a local yoga studio. And then when that shut down and I had this opportunity to cook on Zoom, I mean, that, that just opened up a whole other world for me which was good because a lot of my hiking really kind of got shut down this past year. But I like to, I like to bring people together. I'm a connector. I'm Mm -hmm. a relationship builder and a connector. And if you know anybody from my, if you were to meet anybody from my childhood, they would probably describe me the same way. And so I like the idea of a group hike or retreats because not only do they get to know me, but they get to know other people that are interested in similar things that they're interested in. And there's sort of like this, you know, sort of instant camaraderie with groups of people, particularly when, you know, some people may be really challenged by the hike that we're doing. So there's a lot of support that immediately just exudes from, from the people that are there and people feel very nurtured and well taken care of by myself and all the other people. And, you know, when you go on an overnight and you're hiking up to the top of a mountain and maybe you're coming back to one of the places that we have our retreats in, in North Woodstock, the Notch Hostel, I'm going to give them a shout out because they're an awesome woman owned business. And also just going up to some of the AMC huts, the Appalachian Mountain Club huts, where you meet, you know, just extraordinary people who want to spend the night out in the back country. You get to any of those places and you're just kind of stripped of your day-to-day living, you know, your day-to-day, maybe being on your phone, you know, checking your social media or sitting in front of the tube. You know, it's like you're, you're picked up out of your, your really comfortable environment, you know, your home life or who you might see that evening. You know, now you're in with a group of sometimes strangers. I've had people come on my hikes, my retreats. I don't know anybody. And there's just a, a sweetness to this, to the two, almost like the new group of people. And they leave also feeling renewed. They feel like they, they you know, they felt, cha- they were, a lot of people feel really challenged. So they feel like really, it's like euphoria. You know, it's like a euphoric feeling that like, wow, I just climbed. I had some women climb some 5,000 footer mountains up in New Hampshire. And, you know, you can't be nothing but like elated by your accomplishment. And so, you know, that to me is like the power that these people have found within themselves. And I, I'm just there to guide them. I love, I think I need to go down one of your retreats, Nancy. <laughs> I think you I'm do. listening to you and I'm like, oh my God, all that, everything you said about the AMC huts and um, where, where, Woodstock, is it Woodstock, Vermont? It's North Woodstock, New Hampshire, which is right near Lincoln, right off of okay. the, uh, the Kangamangas. Yeah. Yeah. I would love for you to come on one of my retreats. Yeah. Um, that sounds lovely. Yeah. So it's almost like, I think, I think my own energy sort of seeps into people like very organically and very slowly. And, and it, it, it's like these little uh, doses of ah, love or power or energy, you know, positive energy that makes people feel really good and and they want to come back. That's, that's lovely. And you said the word power a couple times. And I do think that there's something to be said about nature and standing in your power and learning more about yourself. And even the, the story you told about the woman who climbed the, the 5,000 foot peak, I'm guessing she hadn't done that before or wasn't, I mean, that's, there's, we're so capable, we're capable, it's infinite what we can do. And, you know, that's the message that I feel is so important to really bring in, especially now, because people are looking for other ways to be. And 
you offer this incredible service that helps guide people into learning more about who they are and and their and how to tune into their higher self and their authenticity. So well done, Nancy. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. I have so many little stories to tell about some of these women already in just my short years of, of business. But I think you're absolutely right. Like being outside, like the moment, you know, we're done with our talk, you know, with our podcast and we go outside, it's like we change our state instantly. Mm -hmm. And we have, you know, the sun beaming down on us. And you're right, your feet on the earth, even in shoes, you know, up in New Hampshire, you get like the rocky, craggy ground and, and the sky and the clouds. And, you know, there's just openness, right? Which is very different than sort of being an inside person where sometimes I feel like really contracted. So I know for me, you know, and just that movement, for me, movement, just is like a flow it's a flow state and it's not only a flow state in my physical body but it's a flow state in my um in my brain and so i will have some of my best thoughts and my best you know creative moments when i am out there in the mountains is there's just like this freeing of of everything i think that sort of contracts me in my sometimes in my my day-to-day -day living and the women, I think, you know, just to piggyback on what you said, there is so much power and we don't, you'll never know how powerful you can be unless you can try some new things. And I had one woman come, it was my very first hike up to, we were staying at the notch and we went on a Saturday morning, we met at the trailhead of Welch Dickey, which are two Smaller mountains, about 2,300 feet through in the Waterville Valley area, fantastic hikes. And uh, this is a woman who said to me midway through, well, what's your definition of a hike? And I said, well, for me, it's really like climbing up a mountain. And she thought of it as just kind of taking a stroll in the woods. And so I always say to the, to the people that come on my hikes that, don't worry about being last, right? Because that's everybody's fear, you know, that you're going to be last, you're going to hold up the group. I'm last, right? We call that the sweep. I'm last. And so just take that off your plate. And this woman was right in front of me the whole entire time. And, you know, through, you know, words of encouragement, she made it up to the top of the tube. She came back down and probably like 50 feet before the parking lot, she said, this is the best effing thing I've ever done. This is the hardest thing I've ever done physically. And like, woohoo! And I have such a great picture of her, you know, with her arms up. And, you know, I know she was changed. I know she felt like a different, a different woman. And we need this. You know, women need this. We need to feel our power. So many ways that our power has been stripped of us that we need to start acknowledging and engaging and recognizing how strong I would love I actually I all I want to acknowledge your story first of all because that is really amazing and really powerful that you help these women learn about themselves and, and and empower themselves through nature and the outdoors because a lot of people don't even I mean I used to work in um, some environmental education centers. And I was always so surprised at how little certain kids spent out, outside. And, um, and then that carries into adulthood. People just, you know, people are afraid, right? I have, I know people that are afraid to, of the dark still adults, or they're afraid of, uh, of wildlife, you know, these creatures that we share our living space with. So I think what you're doing is, is really amazing. And I just want to, I want to honor you for that. And also pick up on something that you said about personal power <laughs> and, and women, how our power has been stripped away from us. And so I would love to just examine this a little bit more, Nancy, and talk about just, you know, what that means exactly. Because a lot of people, I feel like 
personal power and giving away your power. I talk about it a lot on the empowered warrior, but you know, what does that mean? Like, what does it, what does it mean to you when we give away our power or when we, we maintain our power and how, I mean, you kind of went into that a little bit more, but I just feel like it's a conversation that's so important that it doesn't matter how many times I say it, it doesn't get old. So, you know, how, how do you look at personal power and, and empowerment when it comes to women specifically? Yeah, I, I feel, I mean, I can only sort of talk from my personal experiences, like growing up as, as a, you know, a girl and a young woman that I, I feel like for some reason, like early on, I, I never felt like I had power. Like I never felt like, I don't know, maybe it's the patriarchal society that we're living in and governed by and ruled by, you know, I work at a school, I have a male principal, you know, there was a male superintendent, like, you know, I, I obviously there are women in these positions, but why are there so many more men in these, you know, dominant kinds of um, in roles, you know, from the, from, you know, from the top down, right? We still in this country can't get a woman voted in as a president of the United States. And I, I don't think I have, you know, I don't know if I have a great answer. I, I just feel like, you know, the women are going to the empowerment camps and the power programs. <laughs> and we're trying to, you know, like my, my program, my health and lifestyle coaching program is called Power Up. It's to, you know, to show women that we have what it takes inside of us. We don't always need external, right? I mean, I learned that through my yoga practice and my yoga teaching is that all that we have is within us. We have to learn how to access it. And it can be through yoga. For me, it's also been with my diet and my lifestyle. It's also been through my hiking. You know, that in 2012, when I decided that like, I was going to be an empty nester as my second son was going off to college and I'm a single woman. I was like, I got to find some other people that want to do this. For me, it was the beginning of just like activity. But then as I started to hike and to see my own relationship with being outside and really the mountains and being able to conquer a mountain, that is power. You know, like setting out maybe an intention or a challenge for yourself and then being able to to sort of, oh, for lack of a better word, meet that goal, but but to, to feel your success in what you intended to go out and do. And for me, a lot of it is the physical challenge. You know, I have a fairly extensive hiking resume. <laughs> which includes hiking to the top of Mount Whitney at like over 14,000 feet, which is, you know, the, it's the highest peak in the lower 48. So wow. there's, a, yeah. And you know, when you do th things, I think over and over again, when you're constantly challenging yourself, whether it's physically or even emotionally, right. Or spiritually, you, you, there's a, there's like a neurofeedback, right. That comes into, you know, yourself physiologically, emotionally comes into your brain waves. It's like, it's, it's a good positive feedback loop that mm -hmm. we get, right. That continually nourishes us, powers up. I mean, there's so many words that you could use interchangeably. So I don't know if I answered your question. No, you did. You, you, you absolutely did. And I feel like you really expanded in a way that I, I had all these questions that came through while you were talking. And, you know, I would love to address, you know, if somebody's listening and they're thinking, I feel like it's a human thing and it's a program thing. And, and you know, the idea of limitation, mm. you know, how so many of us so we we just grew up in a society of limitation in my interpretation and so there might be 
people listening, women listening, warriors listening. Um, I know I have men and women who listen who are like, I could never do something like that. Like I could never hike a 14 or, or a six or, or that's just, I'm not a hiker or, you know, we, we, we limit ourselves by simply just putting labels on ourselves that it's not our fault either, because it comes from a lot of it is subconscious. I talk about brain habits a lot. Like it comes from, you know, when we were often really small because somebody gave us black magic, right? Like they told us a story that we were limited or that we couldn't do these things or, you know, you're short, you can't do this or you're Italian. So you're always going to be fat. It's, you know, the stories that we, we take with us from our childhood is just crazy. And I'm just curious. I mean, I feel like you illustrated that with with the story you told about the woman, but how powerful to be able to take somebody out. I guess I've just, I wanted to just reflect that back to you really is, is what you, the way you help people is so powerful. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm hearing is that you have a lot of breakthroughs with your clients when they thought they were limited in something and they realized, uh, no, I'm not. And that just opens up for the next thing, the next expansion. You know, thank you for acknowledging that. And again, like I started this business, I didn't really, it wasn't my intention. You know, I didn't say like, I'm going to start a business to empower people. It was really, again, just um, how I do things, just finding these, um, for me, it was the hiking and the yoga um, and just being outdoors and figuring out like how I could, you know, int- I didn't even figure out how I can integrate it. It just kind of happened organically when I was out with a group of friends on a hike up on the top of Cannon Cliffs and we all did a tree pose together. And it's, it was in the most mag- one of the more magnificent areas of the White Mountains. And it was up on uh, Franconia, through Franconia Notch up on 93. And I just had this vision and I was like, wow wouldn't it be great if I could bring more people out and do things like this? So that's really where that, you know, where that all came from. It just really happens organically. And um, I never really know who the people are that are going to come on, on my hikes either. I I try to do a little bit of a screening, but I also try to make my, um, my hikes available to everybody. And I would say if there is somebody who's listening that would really want to try to go on a hike, well, first of all, they can contact me, but start simple. In my coaching program, we use use the method called Kaizen, and it's really just small incremental steps that are going to take you to, um, to something greater. So, you know, you can think about it as sort of the, oh, there was like the couch potato to a marathon just breaking something down into smaller steps so that each small step is is doable and reachable. I I heard this quote from somebody, I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was, but but somebody said, make it so simple you can't say no. And that's really a big philosophy just in my Power Up coaching program as I help people break things down into small incremental steps and they take one step and then another and another And I think the hardest step is usually the first step. We have that inner critic. I'm reading a great book now, Playing Big. I think that's what it's called. And it's it's all about breaking through our limitations. And uh, there's reference to the inner critic that we have, right? And we also have an, an inner mentor. But for whatever reason, we focus in on the, on the critic. And that's who we pay attention to, like the negative space where there's so many other wonderful things going on in our life, right? But we choose to pay attention to the things that that are limiting us. So, yeah, I, I think there's something magic also about tying it all together, like being outside, being with a group of people, being with a, you know, a trustworthy leader and taking that first step. And I think signing up for one of my hikes is probably the hardest thing you can do. Just, just even making that commitment to yourself. Right. Because once they, once they're there, right. Like you said, making that decision is the hardest, but once you're there, right. It's, it gets much, much easier. 
Because yeah, it's just really, it's a matter of getting out of our comfort zone, right? Because our reptilian brain is always going to try to talk us out of things that are unfamiliar and new and different. So when you are noticing that resistance of say, say you wanna do a hike with Nancy, right? Oh, I couldn't do that, right? That is the, that is only, that is not you. That is your brain telling you to stay safe. Right. So I can assure you, I am looking at Nancy right now. She is a totally safe person. <laughs> you should definitely <laughs> sign up and go on a hike with her. <laughs> and I might see you there. <laughs> you have to like get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Yes. And I think it's hard for people. I think people want to stay in their comfort zone. Yeah. It's so true. It's so true. And, you know, I just listening to you talk, it's so clear that you found your dharma, like you're, you just light up when you talk about your work and, and being outside and, and, and just in talking about your journey about how it's helped you. And anyway, I just think it, I think it's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, of course. And you also have, I know you mentioned your other program, your health and nutrition program. So would you like to talk a little bit about that? Power Up? My Power Up coaching program as being a health and lifestyle coach. So it's based on the the principles of Ayurveda. And Ayurveda is a very ancient healing system. It's like the sister to yoga coming from India. And I absolutely love the principles because to me they make so much sense they're all based in uh, the circadian rhythms of the day so the the flow of the day from sunrise to sunset and we start to notice how the energies change through different parts of the day and there's certain just self-care practices that that become part of the uh, the rituals of the day from you know, waking up with the sun to learning how to sit in silence to sort of free our brain from all of these thoughts that continue to go round and round and round to, uh, to sort of look inward in our digestive system through Ayurveda, our digestive system is really the, uh, the key to our health. So looking at things that are going on in your own, in your own digestive system, starting to mirror the, even the way you eat with the, the movement of the sun, the rise and the follow the sun becoming more connected with plant world so moving towards plant-based diet and it's to to me it just is an extension of of who I am because it becomes for me it's really like a lifestyle I made a lot of these transitions over time because I first got introduced to Ayurveda back in 2000 and Four, 13 or 14. So I'm sort of like a lifelong learner of it. And some of the practices we, I will take on my retreats with me and share with the people that, that I spend the overnight with, or maybe the week long retreat. I don't want to give too much away. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and my coaching program is a little bit different because it's in a group format. So we've been meeting on zoom for several years before the whole world let, you know, started, started zooming and we build accountability to ourselves and to the group through a very dynamic sort of program that I lead people through. And, you know, I've had people, you know, it's very personalized. People sort of set their own, I don't really want to say goal. We talk about an identity evolution. So who you might want to be six months from now or one year from now. And we try to use that as our path of change. And I've had people even not even wanting to lose weight, but I had one of my um, clients lose about 35 pounds just from switching to a plant-based diet. That was her choice. It's not really a have to as being part of the program, but she started looking at her own, her own eating habits and her own digestive issues because there were several. And um, I've had people now who exercise regularly. So either daily or maybe three or four times a week to people who are getting a better night's sleep, who now understand why a bedtime routine is really important. And for people who are just feeling a lot less stressed out. And that, that, that's harder to sort of quantify, but I know there's truth in that from the people because I can see it in their face, you know, or they can say to me that I'm getting now 
you know, seven or eight hours of sleep where I used to get maybe five or six. And we all know from all of the studies that are continuously come out about the impact of getting uh, a certain amount of hours of sleep a day and, and the impact that it has on our, um, you know, our overall well-being, our immune system, as well as our, um, our brain function, the ability to make decisions, to be organized, right, to make those kind of executive types of decisions that we have to make, to not wake up with brain fog, to make better choices in all parts of our life. So again, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm just the witness. <laughs> I'm the witness of people again through my power up coaching program, finding their wisdom, finding their power within themselves through a particular program that I lead them through so that they become the person that they can identify as their future self. Oh, so needed. So needed. I mean, I feel like it's always been needed. I remember when I had my acupuncture practice, like I was thinking about this recently when I was getting ready to, to prepare for a project, I would say like 90% of my acupuncture patients were anxious or had some kind of stress related thing going on. I mean, that's, that's why I believe that so many of us are dealing with pain and so many other things, right? It's stress related. So what you're offering right now, I think is so valuable for people. And I think the listeners are really going to gain a lot of value by learning from you and, and learning more about you and how you can help them. So how can, if anybody's listening, Nancy, how can um, people get in touch with you? I will also drop this in the show notes as well. But if people are just listening now and they wanna know, how can they find you? Sure, they can go onto my website, peaksandposes.com. They can subscribe to my website. They can find myself, Nancy Wind on Facebook, or they can, on Facebook and Instagram. They can also find Peaks and Poses on Facebook as a, as a business page, they can like it. They can also follow Peaks and Poses on Instagram. I would love that. And uh, I also have a YouTube channel right now just with some short yoga practices. because I'm also a yoga instructor. So you can find me, uh, Nancy Wind on YouTube and subscribe to my channel that way. But peaksandposes.com, my website is probably the best way. Friend me on Facebook or Instagram. Yeah, and I have some events coming up and they're gonna be more through the summer, really trying to take advantage of the summer season here and especially the fall as well to get outside and to, to post some more hikes now that we have a little bit more freedom and how we can um, socialize. Yes. Yes, absolutely. How exciting. So yeah. thank you so much, Nancy. This was a wonderful conversation uh, to the warriors listening. Definitely look Nancy up on Instagram and on her website, Facebook, and I will put everything in the show notes. Thank you so much, Nancy. It was a pleasure having you today. Thank you so much. And thank you to the warriors who listened to today. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Empowered Warrior Podcast. It is an honor and a privilege to have you as a listener. If you've enjoyed listening to this podcast and would like to help others pave their pathway to freedom, end their disempowerment and suffering, and become an empowered warrior, please share this podcast with your friends and family. Also, it is my intention to help humanity grow and evolve to their highest potential, So if you really enjoy what you're hearing, please help me spread the word by leaving a review in iTunes. Thank you again, and I am so grateful to be able to serve you in this very exciting way.